Hi, this is Dr. Chet Riho, Chair of the Division of Cardiovascular Diseases at Mayo Clinic Rochester. Today I have two very special guests with me, Dr. Varen Summers, a leading physician scientist in our division, whose special area of expertise is sleep apnea and its effects on the cardiovascular system, and Dr. Andrew Calvin, cardiovascular fellow in our division and also with Dr. Summers. Varen, Andy, welcome. Hi, Chet. Varen, I wonder if you can tell us what happens to the cardiovascular system during sleep and when we don't get enough sleep? So uh, during sleep, uh, we, we have to remember that, that the uh, essential uh, drivers to cardiovascular activation like activity, mental stress, are uh, off the table, so to speak. So really, it's the state of the brain that's defining what the cardiovascular system is doing. And it's the state change that occurs during the different sleep stages. And we'll think of it as REM and non-REM. During deepening stages of non-REM sleep, there's a gradual reduction in sympathetic drive to the peripheral blood vessels and also to the heart. So you have a progressive reduction in blood pressure and a progressive slowing in heart rate. During REM sleep, which is the time when we are most likely to be dreaming, rapid eye movement, REM, the sympathetic system is, in a sense, unstable and very unpredictable. Sympathetic drive can get up to very high levels. Heart rate and blood pressure fluctuate uh, uh, very significantly, and that's the time you can often see arrhythmias like uh, wanky bark in, in otherwise very healthy people uh, in terms of inadequate and sleep. Yes. And, and Andy, why don't you tell us what happens to the cardiovascular system when we don't get enough sleep, which seems to be a common problem nowadays? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, growing in magnitude. It's a, it's been labeled as a public health epidemic by the Centers for Disease Control. Unfortunately, there's no simple answer. We simply don't know the long-term effects. The preliminary studies suggest that there's an increase in uh, catecholamine levels, that there's an increase in cardiac sympathetic function, there's probably an increase in blood pressure, uh, there's also an increased uh, drive to eat and consume more calories. So all of the things that we try to avoid in our cardiac patients probably are promoted by a lack of sleep. Varen, what is sleep apnea? And, and does it affect the heart and does it affect the cardiovascular system? So, so we'll talk primarily about obstructive sleep apnea because that's the more common kind. That's the kind associated with snoring. And, and what it is, is when you fall asleep, particularly when you're in REM sleep, you lose postural muscle tone. And that loss of tone affects the upper airway, making the upper airway in a sense flaccid like a wet paper straw. So when people breathe in, the airway collapses on itself and stays obstructed until they overcome the obstruction or the brain wakes up. They, subjectively, they're not aware they're waking, but the brain, uh, by, by electroencephalographic monitoring, shows that they're awake. Now, the problems with sleep apnea relate to the hypoxemia, the apnea, the CO2 retention, and what's called Muller maneuvers, the very negative intrathoracic pressure that's generated as people struggle to breathe in against an occluded upper airway. And what happens is the hypoxemia, the CO2, et cetera, trigger a, a number of responses. Acutely, sympathetic activation that vasoconstricts that raises blood pressure to levels as high as 220 over 140 during sleep. Uh, you get uh, endothelin release from the endothelial cells, which results in a more sustained blood pressure increase. There's also some thought that you have free radical production because of the frequent hypoxemia and reperfusion. Now, these are just some of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg of changes that happen with sleep apnea. And, and the, the unfortunate thing is many of these uh, problems carry over into daytime normoxic wakefulness. So people with sleep apnea will often have sustained hypertension even during the daytime. Mm. Andrew, you had also mentioned some of the negative consequences of lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, is this seen clinically? Does it affect, for example, the incidence or, or circadian variation in myocardial infarction? Yeah, so as some of the summers uh, directed by Dr. Summers has showed, there is an increased risk of myocardial infarction uh, during the nighttime hours, particularly in people who have sleep apnea. So there absolutely seems to be some circadian effect there. Whether this affects other diseases, we simply don't know, but perhaps this is one of the reasons for the morning blood pressure surge observed in, in some studies. So do we think this is causal, or, or is it an association? Is there something else underlying, or do we know what it is yet? We simply don't know, but from everything we've learned in the basic lab, uh, there's nothing good about sleep apnea, there's nothing good about lack of sleep, so my fear is that it is causal. Yeah. Varent, how, how do we screen for and diagnose sleep apnea? 
So, so I'll, I'll start with diagnosis check, and that's my overnight polysomnography, which is a fairly expensive test requiring admission to the hospital uh, for at least one night, often, often two for treatment. So there's an imperative to, to being able to screen people uh, so that we don't have to do these expensive tests uh, on, on a large number of individuals. And the, 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 the symptoms that, that would make you think of sleep apnea are disruptive snoring, uh, if the wife or husband notes witnessed apnea as they see the spouse actually stop breathing during sleep. Other things are overweight. Most but not all patients with severe obstructive sleep apnea will have uh, comorbid obesity. Uh, daytime somnolence, sleeping uh, or falling asleep while driving, uh, watching TV in a movie during a conversation is a good sign of obstructive sleep apnea. If you have a patient with existing cardiovascular disease, hypertension, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, resistant hypertension, very high likelihood that resistant hypertensives, regardless of all other factors, will have significant obstructive sleep apnea. Patients with, with heart failure that's not well responsive to treatment, that retain fluid, that, 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 uh, that require uh, intensive drug therapy, look for obstructive sleep apnea because they actually get edema of the upper airway, which narrows the airway, which makes them even more prone to, to obstructing the airway. Patients with atrial fibrillation with frequent recurrences after cardioversion think about obstructive sleep apnea. So really, just about any severe cardiovascular condition can be negatively impacted by sleep apnea. Absolutely, and we think, although this hasn't been definitively proven, that treatment of the obstructive sleep apnea may actually improve the, 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 the natural history of the cardiovascular problem. But, uh, but that the definitive answer to that possibility is contingent on randomized trials which are currently in process. So should we be doing much more screening for sleep apnea than we currently are? I think, I think at, at Mayo we are probably uh, very active in, in screening patients for sleep apnea. But I think uh, uh, in, in a broader sense, I think uh, people, uh, uh, I think patients would be well served by having their providers being more sensitive to the possibility that there is comorbid sleep apnea because that can certainly, or diagnosis and treatment can certainly affect treatable. the progress of the disease, yes. yes. Yeah. My guests today have been Dr. Viren Summers and Andrew Kelvin who have given us a fascinating overview of the problem of sleep apnea. They've discussed its many, many negative perturbations on the cardiovascular system as a whole and its potential role in the pathogenesis of all types of cardiovascular disease, including ischemic, heart failure, hypertension, and arrhythmia. So, Viren, Andrew, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Thanks very much. Thank